Buddy, how are you? Is everyone warm enough? <laughs> it's good, good to hear. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you for coming today to King's Church on this special occasion of uh, Reuben's baptism. So we have, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We have got a couple of other um, young people who've been, who've done a course to get baptised, but they were meant to have football matches today, uh, and so we're going to actually baptise them on the 2nd of Jan. So that's something else to look forward to. We've got a couple more, of um, one at the back waiting and the, another one who's not here today. So um, uh, Ruben and, and Jack and James have been studying together and they're all going to get baptised soon, but just Ruben today. So that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Um, yeah, sorry, it's a bit more chaotic than usual. Um, we're waiting for one of our star rappers to turn up. <laughs> so... Uh, do you know these artists, these pop stars? It's hard to get them to come on time, isn't it? But uh, hopefully he's going to come before we need him. Um, so we're just going to... Is he here? He's not coming. Uh, one of our pop stars isn't coming. We'll, we'll do it some other way. Um, you, you, you other pop stars, you sort out who's going to do what. And uh, we're, we'll nail it. So... Um, let, let's just let's just pray and commit the time to God. We're going to sing a couple of songs in worship, then we're going to hear our rap. Lord, thank you that we can be together today as the family of God. Be with us and bless this time. Help us to meet with you. And we just pray for a special time as we baptize Reuben. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's stand up, shall we? And uh, we're going to sing some songs chosen by Reuben. We're just going to sing a couple of songs and then we'll get into the, the, the baptism. <laughs> That's the wrong song. <laughs> Hold on. Try that one. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. Savior. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. Shine your light and let the whole world see. 
We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, we can move the mountains. Our God is mighty to save. and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the Just give me Jesus I don't want anyone else I don't need anything else You are my one thing You are my one thing I don't want anyone else I don't need anything else You are my one thing you are my wanting, I don't want anyone else, I don't need anything else, you are
Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Okay, we're um, going to see if our super pop group are going to come. We really need to have a loud round of applause because they're all so nervous and they don't want to come, especially as one of our super rappers doesn't come. It's the price of being famous, isn't it? This is the beat. Okay, something like that. Amazing. When they become famous, you saw them here first. (laughs) Well done, you guys. That was awesome. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, let's hear it again for them. Wasn't that awesome? (laughs) We really love our young people. They're fantastic. And um, it's great that we can baptize some of them, that some have given their lives to Christ. And, um, yeah, we're so excited about that. At the start of the year, we're really praying that God would touch some of our young people. And um, so Reuben, my son, one of them, number three in uh, age in the sons, is, uh, is... Decided he wants to give his life to the Lord and be baptized. So, Reuben, would you like to 
give you a little talk. <laughs> Ruby's prepared a really good talk. So he's just going to talk about what it means for him and why he wants to get baptised. I'll straighten your paper out. Hello. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go straight into it. My whole life, I've been missing something. A piece of me. A void in my heart. And then one day in summer, I was debating jobs that I could do in the car because I was bored. Fireman, I'm not brave enough. Teacher, I'm not patient enough. And then one day, one time, uh, a joke popped into my head. What if I was a vicar? That was it. I just knew it was like a click, you know? From there, yeah, my life's been turned upside down, just completely changed. I can't place into words. It's just not the same. It's like color TV. Like I've been watching gray pixels all my life. And then, bam! light switched on 4k I could take all day explaining how different my life is but I'm going to take off my jacket <laughs> <laughs> all within these few months but instead I want to share with you how I've been changed there's an elegance to becoming a Christian there's discovery of God's love his grace his forgiveness and for a while to quote my dad, it's all pretty good on the God of Sunshine Unicorns and Rainbows boat. But after a while, when you really get into it, when you start to connect with God and understand his word, you, you come to realization. My goodness, I'm a terrible person. I'm sinful by nature. I'm controlled by the opinions of others. And my human essence and my thoughts they go against, opposite to the word of God. And this really bummed me out for a little bit. But it was, it was necessary for this time for me to understand how gracious God is. I needed to know how low I was to comprehend how high he is to save me. That we're, we're so spiteful, we're so judgmental, and we neglect God and place our fears above him. It's when we turn to him, when we stumble and run towards him, he welcomes us with open arms. He, he forgives our doubt in him. He forgives our lack of faith and he comforts us. What could we ever do to deserve this love? How could we ever earn it? We couldn't. We could never. And he gives it to us freely. He gives it to us freely. And not only that, he shows us how to receive more from him. He shows us how to be closer to him. Christianity is so much more than escaping hell. That's only the beginning. He wants love. There's a reason it's the first commandment. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and with all your soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to love him to the extent that he loves us. And he's given the answer to how to love him. He, how to draw near to him. He gave us his word so we can know him. So we can know the way to his heart. The way to experience his glory. He's given us the way to the answer. To anything and everything. The answer is the father. I turn to him in my times of distress, bitterness, and he comforts me. He forgives my judgment. He forgives my lack of faith. He forgives my doubts in him. He comforts me. He comforts me. Amen. How could a person like me ever deserve this love? How could a person like me ever deserve this forgiveness? How could I ever deserve this kindness? I could never, and he, he gives it freely. <laughs> He's so gracious to forgive. 
this truly is amazing grace. <sighs> he's my rock. He's my light. He's my comfort. My one thing. Thank you, my Father, and Jesus, my Lord. Amen. That was a good first sermon, wasn't it? <laughs> the first of first of many, I'm sure. Um, praise the Lord. Okay, I'm I'm I've asked um, Steph and Mike if they would like to just come and pray for. Reuben and uh, share any words that they might have from the Lord and perhaps we can pray together for Reuben uh, as he gets baptized and then in a minute we're going to take the floor up and uh, under there is water and there we're going to baptize him so uh, yeah let's let's pray mm, thanks. man you're going to make a great preacher <laughs> <laughs> there's leadership all over you just stay humble, lad. I don't think I can do any better, really, than uh, quote uh, what Jacob prophesied over his son Reuben back in Genesis 49. And he said, a man preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. In other words, someone who is full of the character of Jesus and yet powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit and Reuben you're gonna carry both and you're gonna be a you're gonna be a model to your generation and how this generation needs someone like you young man and it, it thrills me just to stand here and to be with you because I can see my future in you. If Jesus doesn't come back, man, we have a future here with you. Amen. And you're going to build on the platform that we have established, your dad, myself, Steph, and others in this room. And you're going to go further, and you're going to go higher than probably any of us will ever likely to be because we've got that platform son we release miracles Amen. to you today you're going to walk in miracles Amen. you're going to see great healings not only see them you're going to be ones that pray for them Amen. choose your friends well because they're going to be those that walk with you in this new day this new era that god is going to bring about so look to him walk close to him ne this testimony spoke very powerfully now my prayer is every word that you said goes in there okay. and stays in there that you never ever walk away from him yeah. stay close stay real stay in the truth of god's word and continue always to be filled with the power of your holy spirit Amen. And you will see signs and wonders, the like of which probably no one in this room has seen yet. Amen. And you will work them. Okay. Amen. And Lord, I pray for Reuben. Father, it went on to say in that, but because of, he wouldn't prosper. Will we break off every curse and every iniquity and everything? Yes. that has come down the family line and we decree and declare today you will prosper Amen. you will excel above your brothers you will be one that is indeed a lamp and a light and you'll be one that shows the way as you follow him you'll be the one that stands in those places that others fear to tread you'll be one that stands and leads the unusual and the unique and signs and wonders and miracles indeed will follow you, son. They will be unusual and unique. And Father would say, son, he's proud of you. He's pleased with you. You are a delight to him. He created you and formed you to be unique individually and different. And you're going to be a leader in the generations that he has created to be unique and different. And son, do not permit those that would seek to put the cloak of religion 
upon you. Mm. Do not wear it. Choose not to wear it. Father, I ask that you would give him such mm. a wise, discerning spirit that he would be one that doesn't introduce this generation to religion, but he introduced them to you and your beauty and your amazing grace. Father, I thank you for him. I thank you for all you've planned for him. Father, I thank you he knows your voice. I pray greater. Lord, as you bless Solomon, Father, and as you blessed Father and brought double portion, I'm asking for the double portion for Reuben. Father, I'm asking for the inheritance, although he's not the firstborn. Father, you would give him the firstborn's birthright and inheritance, and it would rest heavily upon him. But it wouldn't be as in a heavy burden for him to carry, but it would be a burden that he thrives in, that he loves to walk in. Father, I thank you for him, and Holy Spirit, I ask that you would so fill him today, and everything of the past that would seek to linger as he goes through the waters of baptism, would be left there. And today he would indeed step into the brand new man that you have made him to be, wild and very different, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. All right, just take your seats. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to sit down. Guys, can we have the guys come and take the floor up, please? Maybe, Jill, can you clear some of this stuff away?
mother's womb, you have chosen me. John's going to come and speak in a minute. I think all the children today are going upstairs. So if you want to come with me and Hilary and Beryl, we're just going to go upstairs now. One of these days we need to buy a little fishing net to fish all the bits out. It's from the insulation, you know, that it's so well insulated. And then um, once you take the lid off, all the insulation drops off the lid into the pool. It, it, it was completely clean, I promise you. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> yeah, then you can see if I can walk on water, but I don't <laughs> think so. Good. Can we have the... Oh, yeah, we've got the power plants. Well, I'm just going to talk for a very few minutes um, <coughs> about um, uh, a, a story that Jesus told that we'll read 
in a few minutes. It's called um, the, the Great Wedding Banquet. And we've just come from a family wedding. My uh, sister's son, number two son in age, uh, just got married. Stephen, some of you might remember, Stephen was baptized here a few years ago. When before we had this beautiful pool here out in the garden in a paddling pool. So Stephen lives in America and uh, just married a, a lovely American Christian girl. And uh, their family was over from the States here in Sheffield. So we've just come back from the wedding. So we're going to talk about weddings today. But um, before we... My flicker's not working. Maybe I've, it's the wrong one. Try this one. No, that one's not working either. Let me see. It must be that one. No, it could be either of them. I've lost a, a piece. There we go. <coughs> okay, so d let's just read the story that Jesus um, gave first. A certain man was preparing a get great banquet. He sent his servants to tell those who'd been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I've just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town. Bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you've ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Weddings are amazing occasions, aren't they? Do you know what makes a wedding so good? It's probably the person who invites you you want to go and be with this special person that you know. And then we all dress up in fancy clothes, don't we? Don't they brush up well? <laughs> These uh, scruffy urchins that normally, you know, they look really good, don't they, in those Pakistani clothes. And, um, yeah, look at that. Rubin in a suit and a bow tie. And uh, all your friends and family are there, family gather from all over the place. And uh, you have amazing food. And, um, you know, you all come together to make a really special time, don't you? I don't know if any of you have been to really fancy weddings. Have any of you been to really fancy weddings? The one that we just had was quite fancy. But um, I have a very rich friend who got married a number of years ago, and they paid me to go and say grace in the Lake District. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? And, um, you know, the invitations were like gold leaf. Every guest got a really expensive present just for going, and we all had boat rides and luxury hotel stays. It was really, and the food was um, unbelievable. But can you imagine what the wedding of God's only son is going to be like. I mean, God isn't poor, is he? You know, the streets in heaven are paved with gold. It says in the Bible that God is very rich. Though he was rich, he made himself poor. But God, it's going to be the most amazing wedding. God is so creative, such a great planner. He's had plenty of time to prepare for it. And all you... And all the people in the world have been invited to this wedding. The most amazing wedding with the most fancy food in all the universe. Can you imagine the food? It's going to be amazing. And then locations are important, aren't they? We had 
this wedding in the uh, Winter Gardens in Sheffield. I don't know if any of you have been there. It's this uh, indoor, it's like shaped like a cathedral with all glass around and banana trees and date palms. And it's just a stunning location to have a wedding in. But imagine the wedding in this, the city where just the pavement is gold. Imagine what the buildings are going to be like, the great halls. It's just going to be absolutely stunning. And the most amazing people in all of history, the kindest, the most loving, the ones that have really given their life and made a difference to the world, they will be all there. But you know, the most amazing thing about this story is the fact that people actually said, no, I don't really want to go. And the excuses that they gave were just unbelievable. I mean, one guy, you know, invited to this amazing wedding, the, the wedding of the universe. He says, oh, I've just bought a field. I've got to go and look at my field. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Go and look at a field or have the best food in all of history in the most amazing place. Which would you rather do? The next guy goes, I've just bought some oxen. I need to go and try them out. Walking up and down in a muddy field behind cows. Or going to the most amazing wedding with the most amazing people in all of history. Which would you choose? It just seems, it seems ridiculous, doesn't it? How could people choose that over this? And yet, people do. And they do every day. And as Rubin shared you know, so eloquently in his testimony, his life changed. My life changed when I came to know Jesus. And I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, at a similar age to Rubin, I was 15, nearly 16, and... Um, gave my heart to Jesus, and everything changed. The world just became a different place. I became a completely different person and was just brand new on the inside. And I just thought, this is so amazing. Uh, I'm so excited to go and tell everybody, all these people that say, oh, my life sucks, and I don't know what I'm living for, and I'm so depressed and so down. And you go and tell them, I found the answer what you've been looking for your whole life, I, I've got it. I know it. Here it is. And they go, oh, no, can't, can't really be bothered. And you think, what? If you just tasted this, your whole life would be beautiful, happy, purposeful. Come to Jesus and he offers you peace. He gives you a happiness on the inside that nothing can take away. Gives you a purpose. You have this amazing new family that you discover. People that really love you and care for you and support you. And better still, God himself with you all the time. Every circumstance is there. Even miraculous health and healing. And Reuben himself has had some... Uh, extraordinary healing since he gave his life to the Lord. God is amazing. And yet, why don't people want it? Oh, I'd rather just go and walk up and down in a muddy field behind my oxen. Isn't it, uh, isn't it unbelievable? I don't want to live in that way. I'm too busy. I've got places to go. I've got someone I want to spend time with. I've no time to bother with this God. And you know, I just want to tell you that if you live in a world that is focused around I, what you want to do, your world will, over time, it'll get smaller and darker, lonelier, more frustrating less help, you'll be cut off from more and more of the good things 
in life. You'll be looking from this dark, lonely place. Because, you know, if you just think, well, maybe I'll turn to God at some point, you know, but now I want to live my life in my way. I want to do my thing. You're actually cutting yourself off from the one who can help you. The one who wants to give you life. The one who wants to give you power to live the life uh, in all its fullness that we all want. And the sad thing about that is, and people don't realize, that Jesus himself, he said in that story, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. You know, so many people, they think, well, yeah, I believe in God and I don't really want to follow him yet, but maybe some point in the future. And they don't come to the wedding. They miss it all their life. They live these dreary, painful, selfish lives when they could be living in full glorious color with Jesus, this amazing life of purpose. And as they're living that dreary life, Jesus Because, you know, time is running out, time is running out, time is running out. One day, and that day, you won't know when it comes. Time will have run out, and it will be too late. And this glorious destiny of life forever with Jesus in heaven won't be yours. Not one of those that I invited will get to taste of my banquet. Do you know what life without God is like? for all eternity. That's what the Bible calls hell. And it's the most dreadful place. You don't need to go there. You don't need to live like that. God is offering you this amazing banquet. He's saying, come, 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 come. If you keep on refusing that offer to come, suddenly you'll end up in another place. But instead of that, you can come. And you can live this life full of light, surrounded by amazing people, with the help of God every day. You you never are alone because God himself is with you. And God brings more and more good things into your life as you go along, doesn't he? Do you know you start off good like Reuben? You start off happy, you're born again, you become a new creation. And over the years, God just puts more and more good things in you. And your life becomes so blessed, you wonder how you can fit it all in. Do you know, some of the people I grew up in school, I I met some of them recently. And we're all much on a level, you know, young kids looking forward to life. And I talk to them now, and some are doctors, some are lawyers, and they have this house and that car. But their lives are so empty and so sad. And I just think of all the amazing things God has given me, all the great experiences, all the fantastic friends. More than that, the peace, the happiness, and the purpose. I'd I'd not swap my life for anything. And I know that there's much more ahead. Every day, God puts new things into your life. And the best part about it all at a wedding, really, is you're there because of the one who's invited you. You become a part of that family, And when you give your life to Jesus, you become a part of God's family. And he looks after his family. God stays with you forever. So I just want to leave you with that question. Have you accepted God's invitation? Are you going to be at that heavenly banquet? Or are you delaying and delaying and hoping one day, just before the end, you'll surrender your life and you hope you'll do it quickly in time? You're missing out so much now. And you don't know you might go out of here today and have a car accident on your way home. You might not have it tomorrow. We all need to give our life to Jesus today because we don't know what tomorrow brings. So let's just finish in prayer. Lord, thank you for this amazing story. And I just pray that you'd help each of us to say yes. Lord, right now I want to say yes 
Jesus, I accept your invitation. Please come into my life. Help me to live differently from this day onwards. I want to become part of your family. I want to be your friend. I want to know your peace, your power, and your purpose with me in my life. So, Lord, I accept your invitation, and I give my life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Ruben. It's been fantastic to privilege to be able to baptize you. Yeah. If you want to give, yeah, you could pass the collection around, Liz, if you want. She's waving the collection bags at me. There's also a thing at the back that you can put your money in. Thank you so much for coming, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Don't run away. We've got cakes, mince pies, and all sorts of lovely treats to enjoy as we share coffee together. Perhaps the guys could come and put the, um, the pool back together before... Uh, <laughs>